Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. We found that a good conversation allows us to share what's on our mind, whether current events, what's grinding our gears, or our pet peeves. It also allows us to share our top three, a list of our favorite things on any given subject, most of which are highly opinionated. In closing, we share a good word. Solid friendships are encouraging. Even if we joke and give each other a hard time, our ultimate responsibility is to uplift each other. Our goal is that you'll feel like you're part of the conversation, like you were in the studio with us, and that you feel encouraged after tuning in to our podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Welcome to the show and welcome to our new sponsor, Frontier Forge Knives. We're really excited to have this sponsor on board with us because... They are handmade right here in the USA with American made steel, American made steel, right on hand forged knives, a handmade sheaths as well. Yep. Leather sheaths. Nice. With American steel, uh, a listener of the show and, and a supporter of the show and now a sponsor of the show. So we're really excited to have them on board. Go to frontierforgeknives.com frontierforgeknives.com check them out they've got some knives that are already there for sale but you can also have one custom made for you which would make a very good heirloom or a gift for someone and father's is, day is around the corner it's coming up and this is also a uh, veteran-owned company by a marine corps veteran uh, who runs that uh, with his wife so Sweet. pretty pretty exciting they've uh, if you check out any of their social media stuff they've got tons of videos he's he's doing a few videos every day of all the knives that he's making and the process that he goes through to make it it's pretty it's pretty awesome to see so go to frontierforgeknives.com we'll have a link in the uh, show notes of the description and through his website you can link to all of his social media as well he's very active there uh, kind of shows you some of the knife making process of what he goes through really cool stuff frontierforgeknives.com welcome aboard as a sponsor yeah all right, so we've got a pretty neat show for you today. Troy's going to cover what's on his mind. Quadrupeds, a form of quadrupeds. Potentially. Are they all quadrupeds? Our top three. We will see. Our top three side dishes for a barbecue meal. Yep. It's that time of year. This could get heated, too. Could it? If it, you're it might. wrong. There's... <laughs> and then Matt's going to close this out with a uh, with a good word. So, uh, Troy, what's on your mind? So, I've been thinking a lot lately about pests and vermin. Congress, like m- mice. Well, let me let me lead this off with a question. When you think of the word vermin, like what comes to mind? Mice. Mice. What about pack, you? Pack rats. Yeah. Uh, could be raccoons it could be possum it could be foxes if they're getting into your chicken coop no mm. can't be foxes that's a vermin it's a predator hey <laughs> that's vermin no it's vermin if it's messing with your chickens Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah could be well what comes to my mind is possums Ooh. okay yeah i was on point yeah you were on point you you pick that one out but i remember it's been years ago i used to uh shoot video i was video camera guy for the shreveport mud bugs hockey team yeah right and they used to actually play the wichita thunder in the same league um but we were at their training camp and i was getting some b-roll footage for like you know just stuff that they play during the game and one night we were out at this the owner's lodge he had this really nice you know, lodge hunting grounds and everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, in Louisiana. Yeah. In Louisiana. And, uh, that night. So most of the guys that play hockey or, or on that team, they were all from, you know, Canada. Up, upstate New York or Canada. Yeah. And so they get down here and especially down in Louisiana, they see all these critters and just the swamp land and everything. We even went alligator hunting that weekend. It was a lot of fun, mm-hmm. but one night they were all getting on their, he had a couple of, four wheelers out there they were getting on four wheelers and they were running around and they were trying to see who could capture the most armadillas yeah and possums Mm -hmm. um and so that was crazy and so it kind of kind of grossed me out because i've always thought that possums they just look like 
they they crawl out of the bowels of hell. Really? Yes. They're not an armadillo. They're not as creepy looking. No. Hey, you put an armadillo next to a possum, the armadillo looks like the villain. No, I don't I disagree. Yes. No, no I don't I think the possum all day long. The, the looks possum like the is villain. basically like a like the, it's it's got the, a bat face. The possum is a stuffed yeah. animal. Like it's a it's a teddy bear type thing. And armadillo's all got all that crusty shell with the hair coming out from under it. Yeah, it's but nasty. it just looks like a big roly poly. Yeah, it looks no. like it looks like a rock. Have you been close to one? across the yeah, I was that night. Yeah. <laughs> I was close to a lot of them. No. Now, I, I, I will correct you here because I looked up the definition of vermin um, while we were talking, and it just says wild animals that are believed to be harmful to crops, farm animals, or game, or that carry disease. So the fox could definitely qualify as vermin. But anyway, sorry. Could. Yeah. So, but recently, I bring all this up because recently on the possum, I've had a change of heart. Oh, you should. Oh, we yeah. might be you should. along you the know same why? lines here. Because they eat ticks. I'm about to tell you why. I'm about to give you 10. They eat ticks, and you're bad about ticks. Yes. You don't even check your body for ticks like after you've been days. in the weeds. Four days. Four days. But armadillos <laughs> don't. Armadillos, <laughs> armadillos actually, tear up your yard. They, is what they, they do, do, but they also eat ticks. I don't. I've, I've stopped hunting armadillos because no. of their. Armadillos tear up your yard. They die. Oh, and just, you know. I and think, I don't hunt armadillos. I just, you know play around with armadillos on the road have you ever done that because they're not in kansas that much at all there are quite a few down there where i'm in southeast kansas no i have four or five on my property alone well i'm just telling you you drive around at night in louisiana where i grew up you see four or five and all the time oh yeah i hit one so many well Well, they're they're technically they're a southern animal but they're so you they typically come before the hogs and so that's why i kind of expect the hogs to show up here pretty soon you pull uh you pull up you can do this one of two ways. You see an armadillo in the road at night. They don't see well. And you pull up and stop. You can stop short if you want, where you're not over top of them, but you can't see them because they're that close to your bumper. Right. And then you honk your horn. Well, when they get scared, they jump straight up. Like, <laughs> They've got some ups. They do. They I mean, have some ups. way up. So like you, you, like in a truck. In I've Matt's never truck, done this. In Matt's truck, you could stop and honk the horn and then you will see it like woo, like straight up uh, higher than the hood <laughs> straight up and then it'll hit the ground then it'll run off or you could just pull right over top of them and do it too and then they wait for boom, the thud they hit right under they just jump straight up in the bottom of your car like boop, and then they run off you know, they have a shell it's not too yeah, cruel it's not They're, too cruel yeah they'll be fine possums don't do that though no they play possum sometimes yeah, yeah. So, top 10 reasons you should be kind to possums and not think they're from the bowels of hell, even though they look like it, with those black eyes and the pointy nose. Okay. Yeah. Or red eyes. Red or black? I think they kind of have more red. When they reflect? I think he's talking when he's staring one in the face. I don't try to do that. Yeah. Did you know that you do need a, uh, a fur harvester's permit? In order to kill a possum, and in, there is a season in the, in the state of Kansas. In the state of Kansas, and there is a season for them because they're apparently their uh, their fur is really soft and cuddly, uh, which means it's not straight from the pit of hell. The face for sure is. Okay. That's right. Well, number one, did you know that they are not aggressive? Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, that's where they got the, you know, playing possum. Yeah. Well, that or they'll they'll get up and they'll just hiss. And if they can't scare you away with that that hiss, they just kind of fall over and play dead. But yeah. it's all it's all posturing with that animal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Two, they rarely, rarely have rabies. Okay. Did you know that? No. Yes. Yeah. Unlike, you know, other wild animals, they can get um, rabies. Like bats. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of bat stuff has come from bats. Number three. Which, Batman. Which I believe that <laughs> Which well, I, I believe this any should of them be number one. Tim Burton. This should be number one. They kill thousands of ticks. Yeah. Yeah. So according to stats reported by the National Wildlife Federation, a single possum can potentially eliminate 4,000 ticks in one week. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It's all because of their self-grooming methods. Because ticks get in their fur and they just eat them. pull them out. They either crush them or they eat them. Crush them or consume them. 
That's, yeah. That's pretty awesome. They just got into my, you know, good graces. Is that the highest tick rodent to tick killing ratio of all? I don't know. I'm going to look up armadillos real quick. <laughs> Matt's on it. Uh, possums will not destroy your lawn or your property. Right. Which armadillos do. Yeah. They are true survivors. They've been around longer than any other mammal. Apparently. I don't know about that. I don't know. Are they talking whales too? Possums are often called living fossils. No, they're not. I've been around possums all my life and I've never heard (laughs) someone call it that. (laughs) they've been able to survive on our planet for millions of years they've been around since the dinosaurs i don't know about that just telling you what i researched here chet you can believe it or not six they help with waste management did you know that they're not picky eaters waste management is the name of the company that picks up my trash hey mine i've never seen a possum help with that You've never seen him out there lifting no. the can or driving the truck? No, not, not one time. But if I did, I would I would say, hey, living fossil. <laughs> What's up? What's up, living fossil? <laughs> They're the only marsupial indigenous to North America. I did know that. Yeah. It would be a shame if Australia were the only home to marsupials. It would be a shame, a crying right. shame. <laughs> Eight, they get rid of garden pests. Again, because they're not picky eaters. Nine. So, well, so they don't eat your garden, but they eat things that eat your garden? Yeah, they eat slugs, beetles, cockroaches, but they will leave the flowers or the vegetables that you're growing undisturbed. Matt, you need to get some possums out at your place. They would have to have somewhere to go, and digging in my yard would actually be a help for me. They don't dig. Or ar- well, I guess I need armadillos out no, there. No, you too, don't need armadillos. Just get you a mole. No, because those are those are way worse. <laughs> or groundhog. Well, I can't find the uh, I can't find the uh, the tick the, to the tick ratio the tick ratio that they eat in a night. But because they don't, they do. I don't think they do. Armadillos is that that's what you're looking at, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I don't know. All right, number nine. They may be the key to battling venomous snake bites. I thought venom from a venomous snake was the key to battling venomous snakes. Well, the venom snakebites. of rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and other dangerous slithery snakes that might be hiding in your yard has no effect on a possum. They can get bit by it. Has no effect. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. And number 10, they're actually quite smart. How do we know this? Because they tested, <laughs> they tested with a higher intelligence than more domestic animals like rabbits, dogs, and cats, particularly when it comes to finding good food and remembering exactly where it was to go back for more. So they're smart. Why? Why isn't that ahead of their often called living fossils on a top ten list? I don't know, but I, I don't think they're smarter than a dog. Have you ever trained a possum? They're not domesticated for a reason. Because <laughs> they're smart. <laughs> they don't want to be they controlled. Need you, can't, dumb. you can't hold me down. That's yeah. right. People Which means they don't let the man. You've been domesticated. So what does that say about you? I'm not that smart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never claimed to be. <laughs> yes. But I will say, so on the uh, on your whole thing with, uh, you know, Chet calling armadillos vermin because they dig in his yard. They don't which, dig in my yard here. But then Louisiana, it was a deal. Like I had, that was one of my jobs is to, to rid our property to, to of all play, the armadillos. To play with armadillos? No, rid, rid, rid the but, property of them. So I was a uh, predator, predator hunting um, out of my property and I had my uh, predator call set up and it was doing, um, I just had little pack rat noises, um, like a whatever, pack rat in distress or something like that. And I had an armadillo that was, walking around and then i turned on the the decoy spinning and that armadillo went up like and i thought he was he just walked right up to the right up to the call (laughs) and then jumped on it (laughs) like i i'd never before seen that in my life so they're not vermin they're predators i didn't think i I was like apparently is if you don't like so vermin would be a mountain lion 
You're a vermin right. in this office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a predator. Oh, is there a Seinfeld episode about this? Probably. An opossum? Just vermin in it. general? Could be. Maybe. Well, that's what I learned. Uh, not to hate things because of the way they look. Don't judge a book by its cover. They could be good for something like eating 4,000 ticks. I'm at tickcontrol.com under an article, Animals That Eat Ticks, and it is, does not list the armadillo. Well, they're wrong. There was a... Uh, a study. Well, they're not wrong. They just left it out. <laughs> but oh, my dilla, oh, I did. My I, I read a study about that. And I, I just can't, I can't find it. All right. Well, yeah. we'll, come, we'll come back to it. We'll I do, get, we'll I do some research. They eat on termites, the they eat cockroaches, grubs, beetles, scorpions, to name a few. They do not mention ticks. If we have any listeners out there that have some t- statistics on this on, or, only if it supports my view and not Matt's. All that it says is more than, <laughs> uh, more than 90% of an armadillo's diet is made up of insects and their larvae. Uh, they also feed on earthworms, scorpions, spiders, and other invertebrates. So tick is an insect. <laughs> it's my default. 90% of their diet is insects. I mean, there's gotta be ticks in their diet somewhere. All right. Speaking of ticks diets, let's transition to blood. Huh? The blood that's a ticks diet so i want to know when 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 your prediction is on the hogs coming up here because you said they follow the armadillos so they that's what i've because i know that's what i've always heard from everybody that has lived you know like in uh northern texas or oklahoma and it's like you know we got the we got the armadillos just right before we got the hogs and it's just kind of a progression almost and i don't know if that's a scientific fact or if there was a study and somehow the hogs are pushing the armadillos up because they kind of, they both root, you know, for, for their food. So I don't know if hogs outcompete them and then the armadillos just have to keep moving because the hogs outcompete them for food in their area. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I've, we've had armadillos down at, at my hunting camp, which is in Southeast Kansas. You know, I've, I've had those there for the last 10, 15 years. And it was kind of strange because i asked uh, my buddy uh, who was the neighbor about if he'd ever seen any hogs. And he goes, you know, I've, I've never really seen any hogs um, up here. And then I left and came back home and he texted me that night with a picture and he goes, you're not going to believe this. And there were, <laughs> there were three hogs at his feeder. And so, um, you know, and there's, who knows, you know, they could have been farm raised and got out and just went, right. you know, went feral. Um, but, they were down there, so I don't mm. know. But it's it's only a matter of time anyway, because they're they're so prolific in the way that they procreate that there's oh, no yeah. st- there's they're, no stopping they're them. They're taking over. Yep. Here they come. Get our helicopters ready. At least they got some good meat attached to them. Yes, yes, they do. The best uh, the best brats that I've ever made were from a wild hog. Okay. Really, really good. Well, we're speaking of wild hogs and food. It's it's getting that time of year where we're doing a lot more outdoor cooking, and yeah. it's uh, barbecue time. Oh yeah, barbecue time. So our top three barbecue side dishes. Matt, why don't you let us know? Oh, you want my top three? Yeah, already. Okay, I'll kick it off. Number three. Baked beans. Love baked beans. Now I don't like. Uh, I, I didn't grow up liking them. I didn't like them through my through my twenties. I didn't like them through my thirties. <laughs> but for some reason, within the last year to year and a half, I really enjoy baked beans. Like you're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. So, growing up, every time somebody like around here would make baked beans, they'd basically just get a can of Bush's baked beans, heat them up. And, do, well, doctor yeah. it up a little bit, you know, maybe throw some bacon in there or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. and then serve it and never liked it. And, right. and then all of a sudden, I, I guess I must've been just really hungry and baked beans were there, which I normally wouldn't eat. Started eating them. And I was like, you know what? These aren't half bad. Yeah. So I just really started enjoying them. And they actually are now 
on my top three. Okay. I like to have them at barbecues because they're they're filling. They taste good. I'm not so big on the brown sugar. Um, I don't really like them real sweet. Yeah. But and maybe that was the problem in the past is people add extra. Right. Do you like them with the same bean or with different kinds of beans? I prefer I prefer uniformity in my baked bean. Yeah, me too. Put that on a bumper sticker. That's just more of a. (laughs) That's just more. Is that Matt's truck? Oh yeah, it's got the. uh, I prefer uniformity uniformity in my baked bean bumper sticker. (laughs) Oh, that's good. But the. you know, the guys over at when, uh, when pigs fly, because you're the one that said that they had some really, uh, incredible baked beans over there. And, uh, I tried those and those were actually pretty good. And that yeah. might've started that. they might've actually started my journey towards trying baked beans again. Yeah. Anyway, number two is real simple. Corn on the cob. Gotta have it. I like it. I like it. With toothpicks. Don't have to have it. Well, nobody has to have it. Nobody has to have baked beans. <laughs> nobody has to have a side with a barbecue. It's not a requirement. You can just have barbecue. A barbecue. That's true. Kind of like a a, uh, a shrimp or a uh, crawfish boil. You don't have to have any sides. Just have the crawfish. That's how it's best. Now, I prefer now. You, Chet doesn't like the mushrooms because they get in the way of the the crawfish. But, I like having sides with a crawfish boil, but. But I try not to eat them because I'd rather just fill up on crawfish. There you go. I, I would too, but for some reason, when they, when those mushrooms get in that, in that juice, whew, it's so good. Oh, they are um, good. Yeah. And then my number one, which not too many people do, and it can be confused with coleslaw, is garlic salad. It's coleslaw with garlic. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it is. I just had some the other day. Here comes the heat, folks. But it's so good. Matt's like, have you ever had garlic? I'm like, no. Well, this is the best garlic salad in town since this other place closed down. And this is a place that still has it. It's so good. It's so good. And they brought it out. It's coleslaw <laughs> with garlic. So the the place that we ate, it was more coleslaw. Is it than, seasoned than, with garlic or is it like got garlic well, ch- first, chopped up in it or something? It is cabbage. Right. Or shredded. See, right. Well, yeah. But, but, but that's literally coleslaw. No, no, no. <laughs> Where we ate it was, but at Doc, you know, back back in the day at Doc's Steakhouse, it was actually lettuce. It was shredded lettuce. And then that's why it was a garlic salad because a slaw would be cabbage. Uh, whatever. I, I get with you after. And I agree it would be a good side dish with, with uh, barbecue. It's so good. But coleslaw. It's at a new way. Garlic salad. If you, ever, if you ever got the hankering for some and garlic see, flavored coleslaw. And they see the, have coleslaw at New Way? Yeah. Yeah. So Really? And, and they've had it for years. I've only had a crumbly burger like one time. Yeah. Right there. Wasn't a fan. Y'all are, Native to Wichita loves New Way. Missing if out. If you've been anywhere else in your life. Like, <laughs> you don't like New Way. Unless you're my out. parents. My parents loved it. It's like, it's so easy to chew the crumbly burger. <laughs> like, That's all I now, got. I do yeah. make crumbly burgers at home. I mean, it's kind of like a sloppy Joe. Without the slop. Yeah. But yeah. You call so, them sloppy Joes or crumbly burgers? Sloppy Joes all the way. It's not the same it's, thing. See, it, that's like him calling garlic salad coleslaw. It, it, it's different. Well, no, I agree. Crumbly burger and sloppy Joes are, are different. But your terminology is the same. Hey, go back to your top three. Come on whatever coleslaw garlic flavored coleslaw number one garlic salad but anyway back in the day <laughs> you know docs had the best in town and then all of a sudden new way came around and, and their recipe i guess has somehow changed because it was really close to docs so uh, for those that don't know if you're not from around wichita docs was a steakhouse was is because it's in past tense it was off of broadway but a very popular establishment that had been around for like 60 years or something like that as far as I never I never ate there but the funny thing about it coming from outside of of Wichita everybody no nobody goes for the steak yeah yeah have you ever been to Doc's Steakhouse like no not really you gotta go and try their salad like this (laughs) this garlic salad is it's so good and I'm like but the place is called Doc's Steakhouse where the steak's good they're all right. Get the salad. You know, they're just. Well, it's like, like oak and pie. They got some pretty good pizza, but their salads, dude, they're awesome. Oh, really? But yeah. Are their pies good? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. But I go, <laughs> I go for the salads. 
And they have like a Italian nachos deal. That's oh, I so never heard good. anybody bring up steak at Doc Steakhouse. No, like you, no, you're either going for the single, the double, or the triple garlic salad. Three scoops. You're not going two at all because they scoop. didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, they closed. Anyway, they couldn't sell enough steaks. So they had to close. That's my number. That's my number one. Is this garlic salad? All right, I'm going. I'll go next. Uh, my number three, fried potatoes. I like a fried potato, and that's the a disc, like not, a chip. Not yeah, not the but not chips. A thick, a disc. thick disc of potatoes that's a little crispy <clears throat> on the outside but tender on the inside. I made some of those the other night. Those are fantastic. We had a uh, crappie and had to cook up some fish and chips, taters, fried taters. Yep. So uh, number two, fried okra. Oh Ooh. yeah, it's, a, it's a, always a good compliment to the uh, just about to any dish. That's uh, and barbecues. You make your own. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got a solution for you. I've got okra in the garden this year. Do you? Mm. That's make, the only way. That too. is the only way I'll eat okra. By the way, if you fry it yourself, if, if or fried. just fried, yeah, it doesn't belong anywhere else. Not in the. I fryer. can't think of anything else where you don't put it in your gumbo. Huh? No, <laughs> I put it. In but gumbo. you put tomatoes in your gumbo too. No, hey, keep it out. <laughs> put okra in keep there. Keep it though. out. It's no. good. Nope. I like okra, but I think in a- no seeded vegetables go in in gumbo. You don't have tomatoes with their seeds floating around in there. Or I think it would be too soggy. With those seeds. Yeah, it's gross. It's, it's slimy. Yeah. It, it's that's, it's, not, it's like not uniform. It. That's over there towards New Orleans where they start putting all oh. that other crazy stuff in there. All right. Number it's, one. It's not uniform. Number one, beans and potato salad is together. They belong together with barbecue. So your bite of <clears throat> potato salad should actually have beans A little bit of bean on bean. it. Yes, they they go together, and the beans just can't be beans like canned beans. They gotta or, be doctored up. No, let me let me let me clarify <laughs> this for everybody. The, it's more important what you take away on beans than what you add. So like, if, okay, yeah, I can see. If that. you are sir, if every one of you out there, listen, this is going to change your 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 world when it comes to barbecue side dishes. If you're one of those individuals, and I, I'm not going to shun you, but if you're like, oh, we're going to do, I'm going to doctor up some beans, like, and this is kind of what Matt was talking about, right? I'm going to take a can of Van Camps, and I'm going to dump them in a pot, and I'm going to add some brown sugar, and I'm going to add some uh, Tony's, you know, some some seasoning, a little heat maybe. Little and Tony's. I'm going to probably put in a little bit of barbecue sauce to make it a little more tangy or nope. whatever else. You have messed up. You've already messed up because you dumped what was in the can into your pot. Let me tell you what will 100% improve your bean experience with all your barbecues. You take the can of beans and you dump them into a colander and you rinse them off. You get every bit of liquid that those things were stored in in the can away from the bean. And then you just take your bean and that's what you're going to cook with. And then, then you add your stuff. You could add your barbecue sauce. You could add your whatever, your seasonings. And brown sugar, in this case, melts down and helps thicken up, m- makes a good sauce. I like my, my beans. I do a sweet heat. So I just I don't like sweet. I'm just telling you. Except for dessert. You're sweet enough. And in my tea. it's Your, your nose will run from the heat, but it doesn't have a harsh, it's a mellow fla- flavor on the tongue, on the palate. It's, 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 they're good. And... You should be adding some form of meat to that mixture as well. The a bean deserves some meat, but then you throw that in with some potato salad. They need to be side by side or in the little same little compartment of your little red solo plate. So you plate. can mix them up. Yeah, you just you don't have to. You don't don't mix them. Mix them. Just on your fork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you like uh, do you like franks in your beans? Beanie weenies. Franks at Bates. Do you like it? Uh, I've eaten a can of beanie weenies in my day. I'm just saying, if somebody added hot dog to their, I, I would say for the kids. But if you're an adult, just go ahead and put some sausage in there, smoked sausage. <laughs> what about pulled pork? Um, pork yeah. beans. Oh yeah, yeah. Brisket. I I typically bacon. Mine would be pulled pork and sausage would be in my my baked beans. So this year when we were 
deer hunting in Kentucky, um, we got a bunch of uh, smoked bacon and we were using that to process some of our meat and they just gave us the bacon ends from the mm-hmm. bacon that they made just the chopped off portion to square off a yeah slab of bacon. And, uh, we used that and I had so much left over that we had barbecue one night and I made beans and I just threw those in there and it was oh, super good. Yep. I learned that from my buddy, Randy Cantrell, by the way, um, washing the beans. Yeah. So you got to get rid of that water. It's water. Yeah. And you don't need water. No. Yeah. Always yeah. rinse beans. Yep. Take them all, take it all off. <clears throat> Noted. Yep. All right, Troy, what you got? All right, number three, sweet potato salad. What? It's potato salad, but I like it a little sweeter. But not with sweet potatoes. No, sorry. Yeah. Good clarification <laughs> like there. Man. <laughs> I should say potatoes, regular potato salad that's made a little sweeter. So the ingredients are a little sweeter like so of the potato salads that are out there so is, is this a mustard base or a mayonnaise mayonnaise base? base yeah so it's like what i mean by sweeter is it's you probably use miracle whip instead of hellman's okay right to make it a little sweeter not in my house miracle whip is not allowed in my house according to oh my i wife. know oh i know <laughs> yeah. about that yeah but yeah, because regular potato salad for me, if it's not spicy, if it's just regular, it's a little bland. So I like a little sweet added to it. Yeah. Or spice. Okay. So, I like the mustard base with a little bit of garlic. You threw me though, sweet potato salad. I'm like, what? Yeah. That would be uh, new. Well, that would that be would not be good. New. Or somebody would be doing it already. Yeah, might have to try that. No. I don't know. I don't like sweet potatoes anyway, but I, I'm going to I'm gonna try it. I'll report back. All right, number two. I don't like sweet potatoes either. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. But I'm going to serve them to Matt next time I get an opportunity because you don't like them. And you <laughs> always do crap I don't like, like put olives on pizza and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm just not going to eat. You have, well, you always have the choice just not to eat. Nope. I love sweet potatoes. My, my whole family them. likes them. You, you know, my mom, They're my like dad, candy. my brother, my wife, my kids. <clears throat> I, Only when you put brown sugar on them. No, they still taste like candy no, without do. them. No, to me, they I, do. to me, I think it's more of a texture thing. I just don't like that. It's almost like it's almost like it should be zucchini, but then it's sweet. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Did no, you? no worries. Number two, garlic Texas toast. Dude, I do like, I do I like love some, it. I, that is a, a good call. Like every good barbecue plate. You got to be able to mop it up. A, have a, a minimum of a one slice of Texas toast on that thing. You got to be able to mop it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what I use it for. Just clean the plate, dude. That uh, barbecue city is probably called Hot Rods when you were in Ruston. Yeah, man, they they had the the professional buttered garlic uh, buttered uh, Texas toast machine. You ever oh, seen that with yeah. the big wheel spinning on yeah, top? Yeah, they just slap it on there. Oh uh, yeah, it rolls. Mark Marcus. I want two. I want two slices. <laughs> Just give you the nod. Okay. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, number one, fried okra. Hey. Yep, I gotta have it. I had I had barbecue today, and I had fried okra. Uh, when I make it myself, though, I don't bread it like they do at the, all the restaurants. Really? Yeah. You just cut it up and fry it. I slice it. Well, I do bread it. Not not in the sense that they do it. I roll it in white cornmeal. Yep. That's bread. Yeah. Okay. But it's not like thick breading. It's not like the frozen stuff that you get. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a a, no. li- a light there's it, more breading. There's that, more okra to breading ratio. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like when you look at it, it doesn't even look breaded. When I I'm with you. I know what you're yeah. talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's a uh, uh sometimes when we fry okra when I'm cooking fish, you just use the cornmeal fish batter. Yeah, on the okra and it comes yeah. out just like that. And it tastes so much better than the thick breaded stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So go buy some white cornmeal out there and try it yourself. It's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. I can get behind that. That's a little more gluten friendly than the uh, Texas toast. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, it is. All right. All right. That's a good top three. Moving on to a good word. Matt. We just moving straight on in today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. We're just flowing. Flo- feel don't, the flow. Don't, don't let the flow go. <laughs> That's right. 
don't let your soul glow. <laughs> <laughs> what movie? What movie? Uh, it's like Coming to America. There you go. <laughs> All right. So we are back in the chosen book two, 40 days with Jesus and on day nine or chapter nine. And the good word today comes out of Matthew six, nine through 13, which is what you two probably know right off the top of your head. I do not. I'll, I'll go ahead and admit that. Go for it, man. So basically the Lord's prayer. So Jesus is giving instructions on how to pray. How to pray. Yeah. And it says, pray then like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I believe that's the, uh, I don't know what version that is, but I'm more attuned to the King James version. Thy, mm-hmm. you know, but. Uh, that was part of the ESV. That's what it looked like. What it sounded like. Could be. Um, but what they talk about in there is, uh, you know, how prayer just feels like a, a one-way conversation a lot of times. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy not to, uh, you really don't know what to say or how to say it. And you just kind of, you know, throw some stuff up and, and let it throw some stuff up. <laughs> you just kind of, you, you just, just puke some up just, to the Lord. You just kind of word vomit <laughs> to, to Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> sometimes it can feel like that. It, it can, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and so they recommend going to a quiet place and, you know, they're saying that prayer is not for show. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people that get up in, in front of a, uh, an audience, you know, per se, and they just, they do this fantastic prayer for, yeah. you know, and it's just like, man, you know, that was, that was awesome, but that's not what prayer is really about. You know, it's, yeah. he, you know, he wants you to go away to a, a secluded quiet place and, and speak to him in private. And that's, that's what his instructions were. Um, it's not for show and it's, it's obviously great to, to pray with a group and worship with a group because that's what the church is, but your, your time and your relationship with the Lord really comes through reading his word and prayer and then listening to him. And it's, you know, it's not, and that's where we kind of get wrapped up, you know, because it's, it's hard because we're not listening with our ears. You know, it's not something we're not going to hear an audible answer from him a lot of the time right? There could be some cases out there, but it's, it's hearing what he's saying. And, uh, you know, it says a quiet place, but a lot of times, you know, on my way to work or, you know, just when I wake up in the morning, you know, just a quick, Hey man, uh, thanks for letting me wake up today. You know, just start off with prayer and get, get used to praying on a regular basis, you know, and if something happens, it's always internal for me. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not something that is external that I'm talking about all the time, you know? And so something good happens. I mean, Hey man, thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. That's, awesome for looking out for me like that. And so, um, the good word for today is just prayer. Yeah. And Take, it, go ahead. Well, you, you made me think, uh, one of, one of my favorite passages is Romans eight. And a lot of times in growing up in the Christian faith, it's uh, prayer is one of the things I think that, I don't know, for me, it's been hard, uh, at, at times. And, uh, you know, you have examples, there's books everywhere. Uh, but one of the things I was really comfortable by in Romans eight, like, what should I say? Right. How do I even know what to pray for? We, you know, joked about the word vomiting up, you know, like I'm just going to say a whole bunch of words and I really don't even know. But, um, and the, if Romans chapter eight, it's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic, uh, chapter. Um, the great eight I've heard it referred to as, but, uh, it, it, in Romans chapter eight, verse 26, it says in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Um, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes, uh, the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So in this case, and it's, it's kind of in the context of it, there's a lot of moaning and groaning, uh, just cause of our struggles of what, what's going on. In that we don't know what to say, but we could actually not even say anything and just groan or cry out, uh, and and the spirit can intercede for us because the spirit knows us, and then it can intercede for us in that in right. that prayer. So you don't even have to have words. I think it's more of a 
and kind of like you were mentioning, Matt, of direction, right? I'm, I'm, my focused direction right now is seeking help. And I don't even know how to put that into words. And you don't have to know how to put that into words. The spirit can intercede right. for you in that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Cause a lot, I mean, cause a lot of times you can be in a place and you just, you don't even know where to start. You yeah. know, you're just like, I need help. Right. You know, and that can be a simple prayer right there. Just, I need yeah. help. What's that song? Just say Jesus. Y'all heard that one? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, I figured y'all hadn't heard that one. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> Some know. of our listeners probably have. It's just like whenever you're in need, like all you need to do is just say, just say Jesus yeah. in a kind way. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> 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 Not in a derogatory right, term, right. but yeah, just saying Jesus, uh, getting yourself focused, basically getting yourself focused on Him, and and knowing that He is your hope, and just. By saying Jesus and just closing your eyes and praying with no words, basically yeah. like what you're saying, just get you in the mindset of he is my only hope. He is the only one that can help me right now. So I'm just going to say Jesus. Yeah. So I like it. Yep. Doesn't matter how it comes out. He's listening. Or if it doesn't even come out. He knows. He knows. Yep. All right. Which is another song. He knows. Oh, you know what? You know that one? Hey. <laughs> he lives. There's another one. Yes. Because he lives. Because he it's, uh, yeah. Is it because he lives or just he lives? No, there's there's a he lives as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nah, I'm not going to sing it for you. Because he lives. There's that one. There's another one. But after we get done recording, because <laughs> I don't sing for free. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in. We'll uh, We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Hey, he walks me and talks to me a long, 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 long